Good evening once again. I am Stephanie Rule. It is now midnight on the East Coast, and the first votes of the New Hampshire GOP primary are about to be cast. 64 years ago, the town of Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, started holding elections at the stroke of midnight, meaning they were among the first to vote in the country. That tradition continues right now, as the six registered voters in Dixville Notch are casting their ballots. I'm going to go right to our campaign reporter, Emma Barnett. She is in Dixville Notch tonight, where those votes are coming in. Emma, it is the moment we have all been waiting for. What can you tell us? Stephanie, it is so exciting. The anticipation is rising, and I keep looking over my shoulder to count how many voters have gone so far. And in the voting booth right now, we can see the second voter who is currently writing in his ballot. And shortly, you're going to see, I'm going to sit down so that you can see it. He's going to walk and put his ballot in the wooden box over here. He's going to shake the hand over there, and then the next voter is going to come in. So this is really, really exciting. We are about to find out what the first six voters here in New Hampshire are thinking, and we'll get back to you as soon as we have some results. Emma, thank you so much. Now I want to bring in our lead-off panel for the hour, NBC correspondent Vaughn Hilliard. He is also in New Hampshire tonight. Dave Weigel, political reporter for Semaphore, and Andrew Smith, director of the University of New Hampshire Survey Center. Andrew, you are the New Hampshire expert. Does what we're seeing in Dixville Notch tell you anything? What are you watching for? Uh, it doesn't really tell us much about who's going to actually win the New Hampshire primary, who's going to become the next president. But it does say something about the history of the New Hampshire primary, uh, the hoopla that goes on around the primary, some of the, the, the quirky events that have occurred in this state over the decades that the New Hampshire primary has been first. Uh, so it's really part of the fabric of politics. And it's always important to remember that politics isn't just the nuts and bolts of policy and so forth. It's all of the other uh, factors that go into the race and make it interesting. And this is certainly one of them. And tonight is also about the great traditions. Vaughn, we all know this is a very, very small sample size, but tomorrow will be bigger. What are you watching for in New Hampshire? Just to the extent that Donald Trump dominates this Republican primary here, Stephanie, of course, there is the chance that Nikki Haley pulls this off. And if she does, that means that there would have been uh, a, a surge of independent, unaffiliated voters showing up to take part in this process. Frankly, we didn't see that happen in the Iowa caucuses. There was much discussion over whether folks would come and change their party registration in an effort to try to stop Donald Trump from ascending to the nomination. We didn't see that happen. Uh, in 2022, in the midterm elections, there were conversations like that when I was covering the Wyoming GOP primary uh, when Liz Cheney was running against Trump-backed Harriet Hageman, and there were questions over whether independents would come out in big numbers to support her and help her. Not enough did. But the question here is, in a moment, in the 11th hour here, in which it comes down to the potential that Donald Trump, if he has a massive win here in New Hampshire, could very well all but force Nikki Haley out of this race, is that going to be a defining enough circumstances for independents? to come out in big numbers to try to stop him. Because if Donald Trump is able to walk away with a big win, it only puts the pressure on Nikki Haley to step out of this race. And because we're looking at a South Carolina primary one month away, and if she were to continue on, those would be a very difficult few weeks ahead in one in which it's not just Donald Trump, but it's a Donald Trump backed by the likes of Tim Scott and Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, Doug Burgum, and a Republican Party that are unified in wanting to direct the resources towards Democrat Joe Biden instead of continuing to spend millions over what is likely would be a Donald Trump nomination eventually, at least. Dave, what are you focused on? I remember the Iowa takeaway. Trump obviously did well, but evangelicals, white evangelicals, were a huge voting block here. That's not the case in New Hampshire. Uh, it's not at all. In a typical year, it's less than a third of the Republican primary electorate. Uh, you, you can see that. You can see that in what issues play, what issues don't. Vaughn set it up pretty well. I would, I would add that in Iowa, you, you, turnout was comparable to about to 2012 when Rick Santorum narrowly won the caucuses. Uh, it was up in, across Iowa in counties where Trump has converted Democratic voters. These counties he flipped from Barack Obama, the 33 of those. It was down in places like Des Moines, like Iowa City. Uh, like Cedar Rapids, you didn't see these independents who were Republicans eight years ago, voted for, or I should say 12 years ago, voted for Mitt Romney and uh, bailed on the party because of Donald Trump. You didn't see them come back. And uh, anecdotally on the ground, as, as we've all been seeing, you're not seeing a surge of those voters towards Nikki Haley. You're seeing a little bit. You're seeing some 
uh, you know, the kind of people who would listen to Liz Cheney speak at Dartmouth a few weeks ago, you're seeing a little bit of that. You're, there's no evidence of a, of a stampede of voters towards Nikki Haley seeing this as a, a great chance to stop Donald Trump, which is what she needs to absolutely overturn the polling, all, all the conventional wisdom. She needs to change the de denominator, of this electorate, denominator of this electorate by the t to the tune of 50,000 voters or so. No evidence of that right now. Andrew, what would have to happen for Nikki Haley to win New Hampshire to have this massive turnout? A miracle, uh, short, uh, <laughs> a political miracle. Certainly, uh, it, it's really important to pay uh, to point out that no candidate running in either the Republican or Democratic primary in New Hampshire has ever won without winning the plurality of their party's registered voters. Never happened. Nobody's ever won on the backs of the independents. Uh, so it's it would be uh, if, if Nikki Haley is able to pull this off, she will have to overcome Donald Trump's lead among what registered Republicans, which we're seeing in our most recent poll of upwards of 65 percent. Uh, that means she'd have to get not only um, more independents showing up than uh, registered Republicans, but she'd have to get 65 plus percent of those people. Those are really, really high bars for any candidate, regardless of the circumstances, to be able to overcome. And uh, N Nikki Haley has, I don't know if she's really been somebody who people are voting for as much as they're uh, using her as the vessel to express their disgust with Donald Trump. Uh, and it's, it's, I, I think it's going to be an incredible challenge for her to be able to pull that off. Not likely to happen. Vaughn, if independents don't show up and show out for Nikki Haley tomorrow, what does that say for the anecdotal sort of no labels movement out there where no labels likes to argue there's a huge appetite right. in this country for a third lane, a third voice, many kind of seeing that this this Nikki Haley move in New Hampshire with independents to kind of represents that. Right. And even the independence, that middle lane isn't all but on the same page here. You know, there yeah. is, uh, uh, you know, there's, a, I think, a Liz Cheney That's wing of the party that is very separate than the Nikki Haley wing of the party. All of us here follow you know what, Vaughn? the minutia Vaughn, of I need politics. to interrupt you. Yeah. I need to interrupt you because we're getting results. Emma, can you hear me? I can hear you. The votes are being counted. We got four for Nikki Haley so far. Two more to go. Stand by. She's definitely won the majority here already. The next ballot is being opened. And that's five for Nikki Haley. Is it going to be six for six? Feels like we're at a sport game. Waiting for the results. That is all six voters here in Dixville Notch have voted for Nikki Haley. You're going to see them write the results on the board over there. We're going to stand by while they're officially putting those on the board. She has gotten six out of the six votes here in Dixville Notch. They are writing them on the board. And again, two of these voters were actually undeclared voters, which is something that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on tomorrow. The undeclared voter is the key voting block for someone like Nikki Haley. That's because undeclared voters get to go to the voting booth, choose whether they're going to take a Republican or a Democratic ballot. And those voters who tend to be more independent minded, they're the ones, if, if Haley can pull this off, it's going to be because of those undeclared voters, Stephanie. And as you can see on the board there, Haley six, Trump zero. There were no, no one took a Democratic ballot. Notable, of course, that former pre that President Joe Biden is is uh, not on the ballot. If someone wants to write in his name, they are able to tomorrow. But no one took a Democratic ballot, and former President Trump got zero votes again. Nikki Haley getting six out of the six voters here in Dixville Notch on this historic night. It is so exciting here. The crowd is starting to to talk about the results back there. The media is gathering and it is it is officially it is officially primary season. It's officially voting day and more results are going to be coming in tomorrow night and we are going to know once and for all who won the New Hampshire primary. Stephanie. Well, there you have it. Uh, primary day. It is official in New Hampshire. Six for six to Nikki Haley. Vaughn, I think I'm going to keep with that same question. How does the no labels universe read this kind of news and what are they going to be saying tonight? 
may I say, Stephanie, I think that this is the, when we're all getting to share this moment here together, this was the most successful night for anti-Trump Republicans since Ted Cruz won his home state of Texas over Donald Trump back in 2016. So uh, there you have it. And uh, Before this may be the only Ted Cruz successful then night. turned around and endorsed Donald Trump, which he did in Accurate. the last few days, despite all Accurate. that happened between the two of them. <laughs> Accurate. Okay, to so your continue. Question, Stephanie. Yes. <laughs> okay. What does no this mean here. for that Wait. for that no labels vote out there who's saying, "See, there's an appetite for the third lane in America." And granted, this was only six votes. Right. And that is the difficulty here, is that what does that middle look like? Polling continually suggests that folks are unhappy with Donald Trump and Joe Biden as their options. But a third party ticket sounds great until you start placing names on it. And guess what? You're going to have much different polling results if you put Nikki Haley on the ballot versus Larry Hogan on the ballot versus Liz Cheney on the ballot. And that is when I'm talking to voters, the, uh, not only in Iowa, but in New Hampshire, other places around the country, there are are two different factions, even within the anti-Trump movement of the Republican Party. There is the Nikki Haley sort of uh, vein in which they believe that she is much more of, uh, of a independent Democrat moderate. And then you've got Liz Cheney, who is just somebody who stands on the principles. And so when you look at what this no labels ticket could look like here, it is tough to come up with a circumstance in which there is a viable potential bipartisan ticket here. Here, despite much of the country, including here in New Hampshire, looking for an alternative that is Donald Trump or Joe Biden. All right, then. Vaughn, David, Andrew, thank you all for helping us here on this special coverage night.